Hello everybody, uh, in this lecture we will be solving 1986 IMO problem number 3. Here's a view of this problem. This is the celebrated pentagon, the, the, the pentagon problem. And basically we have a pentagon and in each of its vertices we assign um, integers like 1, 2, 3, um, what, uh, minus 2, minus 1, things like that. But the main idea is that the sum of integers, the sum of these integers are apparently uh, positive. In this particular example, this sum is equal to, I guess, 3. Huh? S is equal to 3. And then we apply the following procedure, which is cre clearly described here. You just uh, figure out, uh, you just focus on one of the negative numbers, say, um, I don't know, let's say this number here. That I just circled and all you do is you replace it with its um, with the opposite sign and then the two neighboring uh, vertices you just add the previous number so basically the the new assignments number assignments to our vertices obviously the one and two there will be no changes to these two that minus two will become two and minus one will be added minus two so this one will become minus three and this one again adding minus two will become one and then uh, we should continue the same um, procedure uh, again until we can uh, reach to an end so for example I can um, this time focus my attention on this vertex so I draw my pentagon here obviously this two and one is not changing this time this vertex is becoming three this guy is becoming minus 2 and this guy is becoming minus 1. Let me now focus my attention on this guy. Again, I draw my pentagons. I'm focusing on this one. So minus 2 and 2 are remaining. This guy becomes 1. Adding so 0 here and adding minus 1 here will give me a 2. And now finally I have just one guy. So minus 2 here. So let's continue the procedure. Um, so the minus 2 becomes 2, the 1 and 0 are not changing, I add minus 2 to both of these and I get zeros. And it looks like the procedure just terminated. Huh? After just uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 steps, we are able to terminate our procedure. And when I say terminate, I mean um, there is no more negative numbers remaining in this um, on, the, on the vertices of our pentagon. Well, is it just pure luck? Or does it always um, does this procedure always come to an end after a finite number of steps? So that's the problem. In this particular example, for instance, is it worked out pretty smoothly after just a finite number of um, steps? In this case, four steps, and the, the procedure stopped. So our first observation is that um, if you look closer, um, so for instance, let's just focus on um, on the first on this pentagon the initial pentagon and what happens as we move from this state to the next state huh? so um, what has changed or what has not changed we know exactly what has changed from here to here right we know that three of the vertices they changed their uh, their uh, numeric values those three but one thing remained unchanged and I guess everybody has so uh, has figured it so uh, right now huh? so it turns out that the sum is is unchanged after we do this operation right for instance 1 plus 2 3 5 6 minus 3 is 3 so throughout this procedure until the end we realize that the sum is an invariant what we call as an invariant <coughs> excuse me and now the main idea of this type of problem is to come up with what that we call as a monovariant. Okay, so let me write that down. So what is a monovariant? Um, so a monovariant. So what I will do is to each state uh, of the of this procedure, huh? To each state, I will assign um, a value, which will be directly uh, defined by a function. So our function, huh? So probably x one, x two x3, x4, and x5, if you call these integers at the vertices of your pentagon, it should assign a single value, but the trick is the following. It will be a monovariant in the sense that um, this value will be positive, first of all, and secondly, 
whatever value I assign as I apply my procedure huh, as I apply this operation from one step to the next that function should decrease in value when that happens we know that a positive integer valued function um, if it continuously decrease in value eventually this this procedure will necessarily stop because by definition our function is positive always positive irrespective of your choices of x1 x2 x3 x4 and x5 for instance you can think of um, obviously the sum won't work right so we realize that the sum is, is just fixed so it won't help us so you can go infinitely with the sum but a sum of squares for instance or a sum of absolute values and so on can do the trick right interestingly there is um, a multiplicity of functions which work uh, mostly quadratic functions but as, as I said the the, the, um, the absolute value function also works I will focus my attention on the uh, quadratic function and namely that's the function I have in mind one half the summation of um, x sub oops i plus one minus x sub i minus one square so and here uh, obviously the indices are taken at mod five so um, x sub six is equal to x sub one x sub seven is equal to x sub um, um x sub two and so on um but this does the trick uh, and um, if you need to write it explicitly huh? so um, maybe I should right so this is basically equal to huh? if you plug in one you will get x sub 2 minus uh, x sub 1 squared plus plugging in 2 we'll get x sub 3 minus no actually when we plug in 1 I should have gotten x sub 0 but x sub 0 is 5 so sorry for that so that's x sub 5. x sub 3 minus x sub 1 squared plus x sub 4 minus x sub 2 squared and so on. x sub um, um, 5 I guess minus x sub um, 3 squared and finally x sub 1 minus when I plug in 5 x sub 4 squared. I claim this um, this um, function ha has the desirable properties that that I was mentioning early on um, so at each state we will compute this function and eventually if we can prove that from f as we apply our operation described in the problem uh, if the value of this function keeps decreasing but by definition this function is always non-negative and because of these squares huh, this is always positive so this guy is positive this guy is positive and so on right so the what it means is eventually this um this procedure huh, this successive operations will come to an end uh, after a finite number of steps this is a property of uh, positive integers or natural numbers um and now um let's just focus on the example given in the problem consider um the, the the following points so let's say that our operation takes the point u um, x y z and w and after a single step it takes it on to the point um, u uh, let's assume that y is the guy who is less than zero so it will take x plus y minus y um, z plus y and then w that's it so let's first calculate the value of this function at at the original point and then let's calculate it at the new point and see if there's a decrease and sure enough um it's not too hard to realize that um the diff the difference between these values so once you plug in all these numbers which i will not hopefully right so um in fact I can show that the the new state minus the original state is negative so let's just do it like that so u x plus y minus y z plus y w right that's the new state minus the original state which was u x y z w that thing comes out believe it or not simply as u times y plus 
uh, x times y plus y squared plus um, yz plus uh, yw. But that's simply equal to, huh? if you factor out the y, you would get u plus x plus y plus z plus w times y, so it's s times y. But recall that s was negative, huh? it was the number, at least one of them, which is negative, and negative number times s, which is a positive number, right? So we know that the initial sum is positive, so that whole thing will be, um, will be negative, suggesting that as we apply the operation, the value of our function is decreasing, and but this process must eventually terminate huh? so you have monotonically decreasing function which can never take negative values so this process will halt uh, after a, after some point and and that's it and and so therefore it suggests that the, the whole procedure will also necessarily come to an end for uh, for for this pentagon and and and, and we are done so uh, let me remind you that this is only an example of a function which satisfies this trick. Uh, since then, lots of different function has been suggested and even academic uh, articles has been written on this topic. And um, you can easily make a Google search for the Pentagon problem and you will see a lot of articles written on, on this problem. Uh, but the main idea still remains. So we've made use of both uh, an invariant, huh? in this case the sum, and a monovariant, uh, in this case this uh, crazy looking function, right, which somehow its value decreases as we proceed operation after operation. In each successive operation, the value of this positively defined function keeps decreasing and eventually it will come to a halt, uh, it will stop and the, the, the whole uh, procedure will terminate and that's what we wanted to show. Hope to see you guys uh, in our next video.